Yo guys, what is up? Welcome to the DR Sports Show slash podcast, whatever you like to call us. How are you guys today? I hope everybody is doing well. All set up right now. We got everything working. Um, Sorry about yesterday, chat. I meant to put out the uh, Twitter, my predictions and stuff, and completely forgot. Thought about it about a hundred times, too. But right after today's show, I will make sure to tweet those out immediately. So, anyways, let's get into it. It's going to be a probably a short show. I know I said that yesterday. But, at the same time, there wasn't very much uh, NFL news. We have today uh, Deshaun Watson. We have short stories in the NFL. And we have the NBA, of course, of yesterday and today. Um. Yeah, so pretty much all I have for a big story in the NFL is Deshaun Watson. So, let's get into it. You ready? Okay, Deshaun Watson yesterday cleared of all criminal charges. Um, It's going to be up to the NFL if they're going to suspend him or not or what you do. Uh, I wouldn't suspend him. No criminal charges. We'll see what uh, happens in uh, civil civil court. But, um, yeah, I think we just wait to see what happens in civil court. But now that he's cleared of all the criminal charges, let's talk about what happens next. We know he is not interested in staying in Houston and... If I were him, I would not want to do that either. We know that he wanted out a long time ago, the day before, uh, <laughs> the day after, or the day before everything came out, and then all of a sudden, kaboom. We uh, He requested it after uh, J.J. Watt was traded away, DeAndre Hopkins, um, a few other players. There's another defensive player that I can't think of. Was it Jadavian Clowney at the time, I believe? was also. I think it was Jadavian... Uh, DeAndre, and then JJ, right? I think. Plus a few other players in between. Not important, though. So, we know why he wants out and stuff. Doesn't like the organization. A lot of people don't at the moment. Uh, haven't liked him for years. It's a garbage organization. Coach they hired, I have no, uh, Lovey Smith. I, <laughs> I like Lovey, I'm not gonna lie. But, uh, he's been out of the league for a long time not been coaching NCAA as a head coach in a long time. Last time was for Illinois. We'll see what he can do, though. He's left with nothing, but... And whoever the quarterback they're trying to make out to be right now is going to be their starting quarterback for the next 20 years. No. Unfortunately, that's not going to be your answer there. Uh, Houston, Texas. Texans. <laughs> um... But, interested teams, I just put down four, there's probably, well, okay, there's actually, I have a little bit more. Uh, We'll go individually through these. Uh, Seahawks, of course, my team. Um, I've heard people want to trade away the picks we just got. Probably could have thrown in a a defensive player, Bobby Wagner, had we not just released him. I I, I don't know why we released him. If you're going to make more trades, then why did you release Bobby Wagner? If you don't want him, I don't get it. I don't get why we got rid of Bobby Wagner at all, but I would take Deshaun Watson with Seahawks. Uh, you have Noah Fant now. You have um, Lockett. You have uh, Metcalf. There we go. Good Lord. Brain's lacking today. Anyways, I don't know if Lockett or Metcalf would stay in the trade for Deshaun Watson. I would have a feeling one of them might go. I don't want to see Lockett go, but he's going to be the latter of the two. So we'll see, though. Um, Houston does need a wide receiver. Don't tell me that they already have a number one and whatever receiver they have now. They don't. <laughs> um, Panthers have been working the last few weeks. That one's been out there. I don't know what the Panthers trade. I've seen a few Christian McCaffrey which that wouldn't be a bad trade for the Panthers due to Christian McCaffrey being injured all the time. Um, uh, Sam Darnold would be part of that package, but then I don't know who you'd take with the Panthers. Do you take Cam Newton? I don't know. Uh, Dolphins, they had been in talks, what, a year ago? We haven't heard too much about them now. Um, they're replacing two of that way. I don't think that would be a good move for Deshaun. He does have a no-trade package, which means he can say yes or no to the trade. Um, Panthers, I think he would work okay with. Seahawks, I think he'd do great with due to the top two receivers and a 
okay tight end. I didn't give the tight end uh, Noah Fant too high of praise the other day, and I'm not going to do it now. So I'll say he's okay. Um, the Steelers, but I have seen reports that the Steelers are backing out of that. I don't know. What do you do? Resign Juju for a seven year contract, max deal, and then trade Juju for him? I think that would work. I think you keep Juju and you release a few other few other of the uh receivers, but that's just me. Again. Um Yeah, I don't think you keep uh Claypool you keep. What was the other one? Deontay Johnson. I don't think you keep him. I don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. He's not the number one receiver, nor will he ever be. (laughs) But, I don't know. I think you keep Juju if you're the Steelers. So you have Claypool and Juju. Just my opinion, though. Uh, Cleveland. I didn't know about this. Well, okay. We discussed the other day on the show that uh, Cleveland was going to be looking for a quarterback. I didn't think Deshaun Watson to the Browns uh, at all. I Yesterday we said Colin Kaepernick. The Browns are apparently on one of those short lists for him. That's not going to work. And I don't think Deshaun wants to go to Cleveland because who's their wide receiver core? David Njoku? Not really. He's not a very good tight end. I think some of the young and up-and-comers are better than David Njoku. Um... I think David Njoku was good at one time, though, don't get me wrong. Before all the injuries. Yeah, I think Cleveland, like I told you yesterday, is going to be a dysfunctional organization no matter what. I don't think you go with Kaepernick. I don't think you go with Watson. I think you stick with Baker one year, and then you see what's on the market next year, or you trade, well, I don't even know who you trade Baker for. Jimmy G? Uh... New Orleans is on the map. They have Jameis Winston. Well, Jameis Winston is a free agent. I would have New Orleans re-sign Jameis Winston. I won't even think about Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson's great, don't get me wrong, but I think Jameis Winston still has it in him. And uh, if I was New Orleans, I would re- I would re-sign uh, Jameis Winston immediately. I wouldn't let him go to another team. I think he's going to be dangerous. And yeah. And then another team that has emerged is Tampa Bay. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're kind of curious on what's going to happen with Kyle Trask. I think Deshaun Watson would go to Tampa Bay, though. But who knows? Who knows, chat? All right, so that's going to be the end of the Deshaun Watson. Um, As we get more news reports through the next few days, I'll let you guys know. If I had to rank these in any order, I think he would choose Seahawks 1. Tampa Bay 2, Steelers 3, Panthers 4, New Orleans 5, Cleveland 6, Dolphins 7. So Cleveland and the Dolphins at the bottom. Uh, New Orleans and Panthers almost on the same tier. Uh, Yeah, Tampa Bay, Steelers on the same uh, uh, tier above, and then Seahawks above them. Again, I have some bias because a Seahawks fan, but Seahawks, Steelers, Tampa Bay would work better than the rest of them. Um, all right, so we go to the smaller stories of the day. Uh, defensive end Max Crosby of the Raiders gets paid four years, ninety-five million dollars. Um, great for him. I know a lot of people like Max Crosby. I haven't seen a lot of his gameplay, but all right, he got paid. So GGs. Uh, Bobby Wagner. Uh, here's uh, I, I'm not gonna dwell on Max Crosby for that long because again, as you know, I'm not a big fan of the Raiders organization, and I just don't watch their games. I live in Ohio. We're a little far from uh Las Vegas, so. <laughs> Anyways, Bobby Wagner. Uh, looks like there might be trouble brewing in Seattle again, as he didn't find out release from the team. He found it out from. Good old social media. That is not a uh, first-time uh, player saying that about the Seahawks, which I think is troubling. That's the third or fourth player that's came out and said, hey, we got released by the Seahawks, and we found out on social media they didn't have the balls to come and tell us. So um, there's definitely trouble brewing in Seattle. Hopefully 
<laughs> we don't, uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't turn into the Dolphins or Cleveland where we get way too dysfunctional and don't get Sean Watson. But I think that is a little troubling that he is like the third or fourth player to say that he didn't find out. Because what, wasn't it Richard Sherman didn't know he was uh, released until social media and then there's been just a few others or traded out of Seattle has been another one and they weren't told until social media. So, and Bobby Wagner has been with the Seattle franchise 10 years. I would imagine they're going to retire his Jersey. So why they would treat him like that and just throw him out on his way, not even tell him no clue. Disappointed in the Seahawks on that one. But he is looking to go to the 49ers. Cowboys are interested. Um, I think he'd work great with uh, Leighton Vander Esch. I think Leighton Vander Esch is a great player. I think Bobby Wagner could teach him a few things. Um, going to 49ers just make their defense stronger. I don't think Bobby Wagner is going to change the life. Uh, kind of like Cleo Mack. I, they're both not going to change the life of the Chargers, 49ers, or Cowboys if they get there. But they can change a few players and how they play. Um, Bobby Wagner, I would like him to be the mentor for Leighton Vander Esch, one of my favorite players by far. And, uh, yeah, I think that'd be great for Leighton. I think he'd have, be a more successful player. Here's another uh, interesting story about the Cowboys coming out. Uh, they released Greg the Leg Zerline. Uh, he'd been there for a few years. I didn't write down how many. But these were his season stats. Uh, 2021. 29 for 35 field goals. The longest he kicked was 56. Uh, normally it's about 59, I think, on his. Uh, he was 42 through 48 on extra points. Uh, that's not his worst season overall, but that is the worst extra points. And I'm seeing people really confused about Greg Vileg's, Greg Vileg, Greg Zerline's release. Um, and I was confused at it first too, because I thought he still had it. Uh, 29 for 35 is fine. Whatever. Uh, that's a 82.5% of percentage on the makes about that. Um, not the best, but it works. What I would be concerned about, though, is he missed six extra point kicks. Uh, that's not looking good for you. I can see if that's the angle why they released him. If they released him for any other reason, then I'm confused. But if they released him on extra point, uh, missing six field goals from that distance, peace. <laughs> All right, chat. Like I said, those were small stories. Let's get into NBA yesterday, the stuff I didn't tweet out. <laughs> Magic win against the Timberwolves. I am going to have my notes right here next to me, so I know who I selected. Oh, they're right on the back. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, I chose the T-Wolves to uh, win this game. Who did I put? Cat double-double. Cat got the double-double, all right. But... Wendell Carter of the Magic and Mo Bamba, Muhammad Bamba, uh, both got double doubles. Wendell Carter, 10 rebounds, 20 points. Muhammad Bamba, 12 rebounds, 27 points. Uh, I want to see more production from Bamba and uh, Carter this season, like that, and going throughout the um, rest of the uh, careers. Or at least for the next five years. If Bamba gives me that, I'll be good. If Carter gives me that, I'll also be good. I don't know Carter as well. I followed Bamba a lot. He's seven foot. Uh, I think he's a pretty cool dude. But we'll see. They did pull the win off against the Timberwolves, which I did not see coming. Timberwolves are in playoff position. But with them and the Pelicans losing, I'm not seeing too much hope for them going anywhere. Uh, D'Angelo Russell was my problem player on the Timberwolves, having 39 minutes on, or maybe 31, I don't know, 31, 39. Two rebounds, seven assists, 13 points. Points are fine. Seven assists, okay. Uh, I don't know. Give me something more. You played 39 minutes, and it was 39. Um, Anthony Edwards did give me 25 points. Carl Anthony Towns did give me a double-double. That are both is what I guessed on. 
and I was right, and I thought that was going to be enough to win the game against the Magic, but I was wrong. Celtics did win against the Pistons, and Tatum was 31 points, 6 assists, 8 rebounds. Could have got a triple-double. Could have got a double-double. Um, 114 to 103. Jalen Brown is coming in clutch with 8 rebounds, 22 points. And Marcus Smart came in with 20 points. Great. I I knew they were going to win against the Pistons. If they didn't, we would have some problems. Um Pistons most disappointing player I would say was Sadikak Bay. Sadika Bay. Sadiku Bay. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh forty minutes, five rebounds, six assists, nine points. Is that all you can give me? I believe he's a shooting guard and he's shot well before. I need him to give me more. Uh, Marvin Bagley showed up for the Pistons and had eleven rebounds, twenty points. He needs to do that the rest of the season. He used to play for the Kings. He was pretty good. At least I thought he has potential. He needs to use that potential though. But yeah, Celtics win. Tatum was on top. Two is actually I predicted. Hawks win against Clippers. I did have a Hawks selected yesterday, and I had Trey Young putting up twenty-seven. Well, I had Trey Young putting up thirty points. He put up twenty-seven with eleven assists. Clint Capella put up eleven rebounds with fourteen points. Now, I said the other day. Uh, the Clippers coach is getting asked questions by the media. Ty Lu is getting asked questions, and um, he lost it. He lost his temper the other day, and this would be the reason why. Amir Coffey, uh, 36 minutes, zero rebounds, three assists, eight points. You need more. So you need Paul George back. Um, definitely you need Kawhi Leonard back to fill that spot. Um, do something, bro. You guys lost by six points. It's the Hawks. I'm not going to doubt the Clippers too much there. Hawks did have Trey Young and Clint Capella. Clint Capella, show up the rest of the season, please. You're a monster. And you, he, what, he's been in the running for six man of the year before. But this year, holy crap, you went downhill quick. Have a better season. Have a better next five years. Iveka Zubak, Mr. Zubak. Did play well for the Clippers yesterday. 12 rebounds, 24 points. I don't know if that was his first game back or second game back. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, He is used to doing that, though. Um, They have him back for a good time. Then Reggie Jackson shows up. uh, Marcus Morris. Uh, Marcus Morris was a disappointing player, I think, yesterday, too. But he only did play 20 points, so I left that one alone. Or 20 minutes, so I left that one alone. Uh, Grizz, Grizzlies win against the Knicks, 118 to 114. Was not expecting anything less. Um, but Knicks are fighting, clawing. Good God. Uh, John Morant, 37 points, eight assists. Let me make sure. Yeah, I did have John Morant. I uh, also put down Stephen Adams as a disappointing player for the Grizzlies as well. But but Stephen Adams did not play that long, so I scratched it out. Unfortunately. Um, how did the Grizzlies win? Their bench didn't play well. Um, <laughs> I, I, the Knicks, the Knicks scratched and clawed at that game. Their the Knicks bench players played hard. Uh, the starters played hard. I'm gonna get to the Knicks here in a second. But wow, I think the Knicks. If you look at the Knicks stats and stuff, I think the Knicks should have won that. Uh, Grizzlies should not. It's, Grizzlies got lucky. They should have not won that. Bench played bad. Um, I don't know if Grizzlies need a new coach. I don't know what's going on there. Everybody had weird minutes on the Grizzlies. They won by four. But Julius Randle, uh, twelve rebounds, thirty six points. That is the superstar that I know and love. He can keep that up all season. We've seen him improving it himself the last few games again. So he might be a hundred percent going. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, 16 rebounds, 10 points. We're seeing a more consistent, uh, I think, last three games out of both of those guys. Unfortunately, they did lose this one, but it's all right. Um, yeah, I think Knicks definitely should have won that. But, 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 but. Who did I put down for the Knicks if they were to win? Randall and Robinson rebounding, yep. There you go. I did not predict Julius Randle to have 36 points by any shot. <laughs> um, Hornets win against Pelicans. Did I? I think I had that one right. I did. Who did I have? Ball, Rozier, PJ Washington. All right. 
I bar- I don't think PJ Washington barely played yesterday. Um, so Miles Bridges did do well for the Hornets, putting up eight rebounds, nine assists, twenty six points. We're really close to a triple double. Again, close to a double double as well. Terry Rozier put up twenty five points, eight assists. Hornets are scratching and clawing to get into the playoffs or fighting for the playoffs. Playoffs, not the play in playoffs. Yeah, Timberwolves the way they played there have a plan. But yeah, Hornets, they're there. Um, Pelicans. Okay, this was a blowout game, by the way, 142 to 120. Uh the Pelicans, I believe, are also going to be ruled out of the playoff. I don't know who or the play in. I don't know who's in the play in. I mean, I'm ruling out the Lakers, I'm ruling out the Pelicans, I'm, lo- I'm ruling out the t- Timberwolves. And nobody's gonna be there. Uh most dis- Disappointing player yesterday. Uh, C- not CJ McCollum. Uh, Jackson Haynes, 35 minutes, five rebounds. He's six foot 11. I'm expecting a lot more, but they did not have CJ McCollum. So take what you would like from that. I, I don't know what you guys want to do with that information, but maybe if CJ McCollum came in, maybe it, they would have lost by 10 points. I don't know. Jackson Haynes should have definitely had more rebounds than five. Uh, Mavs win at Rockets. We had that one. What did I put down for the Rockets? Because I know I put down stuff yesterday for them. Send gun rebounding, Jalen scoring. Okay, and I put it down. Luka, double-double, pal. All right, so let's talk about the Mavs. Uh, Luka, 30 points, 14 rebounds. Good job. Powell, 26 points, 12 rebounds. So we got that one right yesterday. Um... Reggie Bullock, 36 minutes, two rebounds, one assist, eight points. Start cutting those minutes back to, like, 20. Holy crap. He's... That was a disappointing player on the Mavs, but they have got the win by 13, so they're not going to be too worried about that. But 36 minutes, two rebounds, one assist, eight points, and that's been a trend since forever. I forget what he was the other night, but he was not too much better than that. <laughs> um, Rockets, whole team, whole team is disappointing. Um, which I know that's not a shocker to you, anybody. But Jalen Green with twenty-seven minutes and only eleven points. Uh, the Sig- Sagam guy only had six rebounds. Not how they played the other night. Um. Somebody who did step up was Bruno Fernando. I haven't heard of this guy in a while. Uh, 23 minutes, 11 rebounds, 16 points. Good job to him. Now, if the Rockets could find a way to mesh that all together, they could actually be one heck of a team. But they can't. So, And here, and here I, I'm going to fix the Rockets right now. John Wall, point guard. Uh, Jalen Green, shooting guard. Um, Bruno Fernando, I would put it center, uh, or I'll put him at power forward. I'll put Sengum at center and whoever you want to be your fifth player. Um, let me look real quick. Yeah, I know you're going to see my paper real quick. There, Kenyon Martin, Kevin Porter. Whoever you'd like at small forward, and you'd win more games. Um, But it's a little late in the season. I mean, you could try it just to have fun with it now, because you guys are not going to do very well, but whatever. Uh, Heat went against the Cavs. I selected the Cavs, unfortunately. I said don't bet on this game, and I was right, because I wasn't sure what to expect out of this game. Uh, Bam, 17 rebounds, 30 points. Thank you. Keep it up buddy 17 rebounds that's what i like to see out of a six foot nine guy hard to get but guess what you got it uh most disappointing player for the heat kevin lowry again 32 minutes 10 assists which okay i'll give him the assist but only three points i gotta have more points dude 32 minutes uh pj tucker 29 minutes four rebounds four assists two points we've seen this repeatedly out of pj tucker and they did cut his minutes but i would even put a bigger minute cut on him and put him down to 15 minutes if he doesn't want to play that's fine he's older and he's six foot what six seven eight maybe um most disappointing players for the Cavs yesterday were the bench players 
Um, the starting lineup, other than Laurie Markin, did pretty well. Love had eight rebounds, 11 points uh, for only 22 minutes, by the way. So Love, sh- Love showed up. Garland, 10 assists, 24 points. Mobley, 12 rebounds, 19 points. Bench players, you really need to show up for the Cavs, and I think you would have won that game or made that game just a bit closer for a 12-point deficit. Um, the spa- the Spaz? The Spurs win against the Jazz. Not a good look on the Jazz, but let's get talk to the, about the Spurs. Uh, Jacob Poato had 11 rebounds, 15 points. Good job on your double-double. Uh, runners up for the most valuable player of the game would be Kellen Johnson, 13 points, 10 rebounds, or DeJounte Murray, 9 rebounds, 27 points. Why does a point guard have 9 rebounds? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right, so let's talk about the disappointments of the Jazz. Which, again, you're going to hear a lot of repetitiveness here. Uh, Royce O'Neal, we talked about him the other day when the Jazz lost. Um, 34 minutes, 2 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 points. Get rid of him. Like, cut that down. Cut his minutes down to 16. And put... uh, Or cut his minutes down to... 16 minutes, okay. And put Hassan, Hassan Whiteside up there. Hassan Whiteside is a star. All right, I liked him in Miami. I think he should stay at Miami. Bam Adebayo did fine last night, but I think I think he could could go back. It'd be fine. Um, but Hassan Whiteside, you're only playing 16 minutes. He had 10 rebounds, 13 points, way better than Royce O'Neal. Uh, here's another problem player right here: Mike Conley, 31 minutes, five assists, five rebounds, eight points. I know everybody loves Mike Conley, but you played 31 minutes and you couldn't even give me a double digit. Um, and you're Mike Conley. You're not a bad point guard. Uh, Rudy Gobert, good job on the game last night. 16 points, 16, or 13 points, 16 rebounds. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, I believe, had 20-some points, but that's all right. Uh, Raptors win against the Suns. Uh, Donovan Mitchell could have had a bigger game. It's the Spurs. Sorry, but, you know. (laughs) Raptors win against the Suns. And here we go on this one. Suns are out-rebounded by eight. By eight. Who has the tallest player on their team? And one of the best players on their team. DeAndre Ayton. The Suns. Um, Raptors here. Let's talk about them. Gary Trent put up a good uh, amount of points. 42 points. 8 rebounds. Piasco Siakam followed that up with 10 assists. 25 points. 7 rebounds. Almost got the triple-double. But GG's on your double-double. Um... I'm not a big fan of the Raptors, but they did put it to the Suns pretty well. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, 30 minutes, 7 rebounds, 16 points. Woo, I don't care about your points. I do care about the 7 rebounds. You put up almost 20 rebounds the other day, and now you put up 7. 7. Uh, Payne played well, 22 points. Booker played well with 24 points. Uh, again, Payne filling in for that Chris Paul role is going actually pretty well. A uh, big reason Suns did lose this was because Ayton could have got 8 more rebounds. But... He didn't. Aiden plays whenever he feels like, and it's quite irritating. Some of these players do do that. Most of them do. (laughs) So, yeah, you're the tallest player out there. You're a monster on the backboard, and you only got seven rebounds in 30 minutes. All right, moving on. Um, Lakers win against the Wizards. I did not have that one. I did not have the Suns either, by the way, or the Spurs. So the last four have just been bad so far. (laughs) Plus, I don't bet on the Heat, so don't hold me accountable. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, Lakers win against the Wizards 122 to 109. LeBron scored 50, Malik Monk scored 21. Uh the disappointment of a game. And it's not going to be Carmelo Anthony for once. He was disappointing, but he's not the disappointment. Westbrook doesn't want to be called Westbrook anymore. Let me give you some of his stats of last night. 31 minutes, 3 rebounds, Nine assists. Ooh, there we go. I like the nine assists. And five points. Don't like that too much. You don't want to be called Westbrook anymore. But you go two for 11, and the only reason you won is because LeBron's 50. So you made one free throw and two shots. Good job, buddy. Yeah, you don't want to be called Westbrook, and it hurts you so much. Wee. Wee. Here's what I did put down. Uh, Lakers even were out rebounded by ten. Take a few notes here, sons. Lakers were out rebounded in one. Maybe somebody of your team, like a uh, Booker or uh, 
you know, anybody else needs to put up 50 points or 40 at least to win against the Raptors. Uh, LeBron just needs to score 50 a game and they're going to be in. As simple as that, chat. If LeBron scores 50 every game, they'll be good. <laughs> uh, the most disappointing player off the Wizards last night was Kent Caldavius Pope with 30 minutes, one assist, one rebound, and and 11 points. Or 14 points. There we go. Uh, I don't know. I think people... I think the Wizards did all right last night. I think LeBron's 50 was just too much for them to handle. Uh, I did not have the Lakers winning that. But most likely from here on out, I won't have the Lakers winning the rest of the season. Just letting you guys know. <laughs> uh, Porzingis with 14 rebounds, 14 points. I'm fine with that. Kuzma, 23 points. Again, LeBron's 50, just way too much. But LeBron just needs to score 50 the rest of the season, and we'll be all good. Uh, the NBA today, what we're looking forward to is the Timberwolves versus the Heat. I have the Heat winning. The Timberwolves need to win. They're in desperation mode to even make the play-ins right now. They need to win, but I'm choosing the Heat. Uh, I want Bam to have another night, like last night. Uh, that would take Carl Anthony Towns off of his game. And uh, Kyle Lowry, please, do something. This is the second or third game in a row we've talked about where you've only had a minimum of five points or under. And you're a point guard. I get it. You're getting your assist. But give me a few more points while you're playing 36 minutes a game. Um, Timberwolves, if they were to win, I have Cat double-double, which is very easy in this game to do. Like, Carl Anthony Towns goes off on the boards this game. I wouldn't be surprised. He's going to be the tallest player out there. But I don't give him any credit because of the last few games they've played that they should have won. D'Angelo Russell, uh, give me more than you did last night. Give me more. Um, Timberwolves are going to be tired, so are the Heat. But we'll see who prevails. I'm gonna. I'm 100% sure it's going to be the Heat. Uh, again, T-Wolves playoff push. I believe their uh, playing percentage is garbage now. So, but I can say that about like six teams in the West that four are going to make. So, we'll see. Uh, Pacers, Spurs. This one took me a few minutes here to choose. And I chose the Spurs. And this is for the reason uh, the Spurs' effort these last few games have been absolutely amazing. Um, well, I need that same effort. Keep it up. When you beat the Lakers, when you beat the Jazz last night by two, keep it up. This is the Pacers. This isn't the Jazz. This isn't the Lakers. Um, yeah, that's all I have is need the same effort as last night, and I believe they can give that to you. Um, Pacers, I would have selected you, but I just don't have any trust in you guys. I selected you before, and you guys have let me down big. Uh, you well rested. Uh. The only way you guys win games is when you guys play as a team, and that's few to no games at all. And I get it's basketball. Everybody needs to play like a team. But if you watch the Pacers, they're more going for individual stats. And when they do win, it is as a team. Um, the Pacers, the last game, did about beat the Cavs, and that's how they about did it, too, was they played as a team. Granted, the Cavs are better, so... Uh, Cavs Bulls, I would tell you not to bet on it, same as the Heat and the Cavs last night. Uh, Bulls need a rebound, a rebound with Vucevic. Vucevic. Uh, DeMar needs to score 30. I'm gonna say score 30 and you'll win. DeMar, uh, Cavs bench players, like we talked about earlier, just step up. I need the same performance out of the starters that we saw last night, but I do need the bench players to step up with the Cavs to have any chance to win this game. But if I had to choose, I would choose the Bulls over the Cavs. Bulls did not play last night. Just remember that he or the Cavs did. Um, Wizards Trailblazers. I have the Wizards winning. Uh, Porzingis rebounding. Kuzma bench players. Everything the Wizards did last night. Just put it into this. You don't. Ha you're not going to have somebody scoring 50 points unless uh, Anthony Sa Simons comes back. But the Trailblazers are a mess. Lost by 40 points the other night. They're in disarray. They're just rumbled. And you see Damian Lillard on his way out. My favorite player is going to be asking for a trade out of the Blazers organization. Um, he's loyal, he says. Yeah, well, 
you guys are uh bucks warriors i have the bucks winning this Giannis portis out rebounding uh the warriors big time uh they don't have the warriors don't have anybody taller than six nine playing so i don't have any worries about portis grabbing all the rebounds or Giannis. um oh I do have Giannis with the MVP race. It is his to take at the moment. You had Embiid. You had Jokic play the other night. Um, Both equaled each other out. Giannis, step up and do it. Score a 40-point, 12-rebound uh, game, and you got it. Uh, Warriors, if the Warriors were to were to win, I don't have them winning. I have the Bucks, remember. But if the Warriors were to win, uh, they would have to rebound. Steph cannot be their number one guy in the rebounds, by the way, like he was the other night. Um, I need Steph and Clay to step up with their shooting like they did the other day, and they have a chance. But I think the Bucks take this. Uh, Kings Jazz. I'm foolish for even taking this, but I'm taking the Jazz over the Kings. Um, the Jazz can't lose tonight. The Jazz lost to the Thunder which are in complete disarray. Uh, the Jazz just lost to the Spurs, which are in somewhat disarray. They were playing for uh, Greg Pop- Popovich's um, winning record last night. But other than that, the Jazz need to win. Uh, Conley, step it up. Mitchell, Gobert, do your thing. Mitchell, please give me a 40-point game in the next two weeks. That would be nice to see. Uh, refreshing. Uh, Kings, if you wanted to win this game, I believe you could, but I'm choosing the Jazz. Uh, De'Aaron Fox needs another 37-point game. Um, if they did hold up with the Nuggets, remember that. And the Nuggets are way better than the Jazz at the moment. So, do remember that. Um, so if the Kings take this, don't be surprised. I have full confidence that the Jazz are going to win, though. It's probably going to come around and bite me in the butt, because every time I choose the Jazz, all the bad teams win. Last game of the night, you have the Nuggets and Raptors. I do not have the Raptors winning. I have the Nuggets winning. Uh, Jokic, he is in the MVP race. You you tied out with Embiid the other night. You almost got your triple-double to put you over. I need you to step it up here. Tonight's tonight. Raptors are proving that they're somewhat good and somewhat relevant, apparently. So uh, I also put Austin Rivers plays less. Move his minutes from 30, 36, whatever ridiculous number that you're playing him, down to like 15 or 10, please. He does not need to be playing all the high number games when he only gives you one assist, one rebound, and one point a game. Raptors, same effort as last, same as act effort as the last night. And you're going to see that again with me saying that almost in half of these games here, because I need Raptors to show up if they want to win this. Uh, they beat the Suns last night, so I think it's... And they have DeAndre Ayton. Uh, uh, Nuggets have Jokic. I believe the Raptors could win this if they wanted to. But we'll see. But like I said, this was a shorter sh- show today, so thank you for being here. Make sure you hit that follow button here on Twitch and you go over and subscribe to the YouTube where I have all the uh, stuff broken down into more uh follow instagram and twitter as well where i keep updating constantly and until next time till tomorrow have a good one have a great weekend